Hello everyone, this is Eric, the Asian movie enthusiast, and this is my review of Welcome Back, Mr. McDonald, a Japanese comedy from 1997 that was directed by Koki Mitani. A radio play is planned to air at a Tokyo radio station in a live broadcast. It's a weepy melodrama written by housewife Miyako, who is the winner of the competition run by the station. Suddenly, the hot-tempered lead actress, Noko, decides that she wants the name of the character to be Mary Jane, and not Ritsuko. Okay? And that request leads to a chain of events which changes the play completely and cascades into a battle of egos by all involved that causes continual script changes during the live broadcast. So the opening scene of this movie is like an uncut take that goes on for like five minutes. And we're introduced to the, all the characters as they interact within the one shot, preparing for a midnight broadcast on the radio. Now very early on, we see how the lead protagonist gets pressured into changing certain lines of dialogue and certain names um, by the different cast members, one of which is a man who is hired to narrate her story on the air. And then, of course, the voice actress wants to change the name of the lead character, and our protagonist fails to defend her original writing in both cases. And that's kind of the main theme of the movie, the possible degradation of art as a consequence of the collaborative process. And we all know of examples where a director or a filmmaker in real life you know, gets too much creative control and ends up jumping the shark because no one has the guts to say no to their terrible ideas. But this movie shows kind of the opposite situation, like too many cooks in the kitchen. <clears throat> Because our lady protagonist finds it difficult to defend any part of her original story against the constant changes that are being imposed by everyone else. And there's also another related theme that I thought of as well while watching this, and that's the negative impact of the corporatization of art, radio, and filmmaking as well. You know, in the early 2020s, of course, we are currently thick in the middle of the corporatization of art, where committees of people at Disney, for example, you know, determine the story beats of an abnormally high number of high-profile movies. And we're seeing the problems that result from that strategy. In this movie, you know, the program director, for example, makes creative decisions that have no positive, uh, positive impact on the actual story, because there's ulterior motives, motives at play. Uh, in one case, he specifically makes a change just to please the sponsor of the show, as an example. And of course, there's all the egos at play, right? So this movie has some commentary that's still pretty relevant 25 years after it was initially made. Now, in terms of style, this has a stage play feel to it, all right? With a heavy reliance on script writing and acting. And it is high quality in those aspects. This is an intelligent, charming movie with a brisk pace as the characters kind of run around frenetically, writing patches to the story and finding ways to create unforeseen sound effects. <clears throat> so, you know, uh, you know, they're broadcasting this, you know, this play on, on the radio and they constantly make changes on a whim, you know what I mean, which results in some unforeseen story problems and contradictions at later points in the broadcast. So it would be like if you were like reading a book, right, on the air, and you're like, ah, uh, and you just start changing stuff on the fly in the book, because maybe you didn't like it or something, and then later on in the book, it's like, uh-oh, the change that I made is causing a problem now, because, you know, this, this thing needs to happen, and because I made this change, it doesn't work, and that's what happens in the movie. So now you have to make more changes to kind of patch up the problems that you created before. You know, so it's it's really fun and interesting. Uh, and of course, there's a time limit that the characters are on because it's being broadcasted live on the radio. And the final story they come up with is just, it's so ridiculous, it's laughably contrived. And uh, 
yeah, this is very a very funny movie. You know, it's a comedy first and foremost. And some of my favorite moments involve this Japanese dude <laughs> who's wearing a cowboy hat and he's like riding in his truck, you know, like like delivering goods or something. And he's like listening to this play on the radio and all the nonsense they're com- they're coming up with. And some of his reactions are just priceless, you know. He's just like, what what kind of what is going on with this story? And uh, it makes it even more entertaining that that actor is Ken Watanabe, of all people, uh, you know, playing this role, this dude with a cowboy hat in his truck. It just makes it even more uh, more funny, I think. And then uh, the man-made sound effects they come up with at the radio station are pretty interesting, too. Uh, pretty funny how they can make sound effects just using, like, stuff you'd find in a house. <clears throat> uh, the director of this film, Koki Mitani, has made some other good movies over the years, like The Wow Choten Hotel, The Magic Hour, and A Ghost of a Chance are a few examples. And uh, I have not seen his more recent movies. They're kind of difficult to find, but I need to try to rectify that. It's a pretty good director, a uh, reliable director. Uh, but this movie, Welcome Back, Mr. McDonald, is my personal favorite of his. I think, you know, this is one of those movies that I would rank really high on my favorite Japanese comedies of all time. It's like... Uh, it's a classic of, like, the 1990s, so I highly recommend this. Uh, watch it as soon as you can. It's available on YouTube, uh, actually, right now. And I think it was uploaded fairly recently, within the past few months. I really want a Blu-ray of this movie, like, bad, but we'll have to see if anybody ends up releasing it. But, uh, yeah, definitely check this one out. I think it's a really cool, uh, neat little film. And as always, I will see you next time.